Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our vocabulary. Today we'll have our lesson number 101. Yesterday we finished the previous series which went from day 1 to day 100. Those words, as I told you before, were the, were the, were the words that I've uh, that I have uh, collected myself over the years and we finished this series. So starting from today, as I explained to you yesterday, we are going to learn new words which are going to come from this book. The work that I am holding in my hand here, the RN pre-entrance exam. Vocabulary words, as I explained to you yesterday on day number 100, vocabulary words are vocabulary words. It doesn't really matter whether you are preparing for GRE or GMAT or SAT or SET or T's or HESES, these words that we are going to learn in this series, beginning with day 101, are just as useful to you as they are for people who are preparing for this exam. Let's learn. Let's learn the vocabulary words. Let me. Let's learn. Let's learn new words. Let's see what we have here. The problems that we're going to do today are going to be the ex exercises that you will find on day number on, on page number 23. If you happen to own the book, turn to page number 23. And if you don't have the book, just listen to me. The very first problem, as you can see clearly, is already on the blackboard. It says the athlete was blank after a long workout. And among the answer choices that we have there, among the answer choices that we have there, we're not going to worry about all the answer choices, just we're going to learn the vocabulary words and the right answer. Among the answer choices that we have there, the right answer here is going to be the athlete was famished. He was, he or she was famished. She was famished. Let's see what it means. Let's first learn the pronunciation famished. Fam. It's an adjective, obviously. It's an adjective because we are describing someone. She was famished. What does it mean? It means she was extremely hungry. Famished means to be, to be extremely hungry, to be starving. To be hungry, to be starving. The question is, do you know a word which would qualify as an antonym of the word famish. If famish means to be extremely hungry, then the antonym, then the antonym, whatever it happens to be, would have to mean somebody who is not starving, but slightly hungry. Do you know the word? A word which means to be slightly hungry, which is not in the book here, which is nothing to do with it. We're just learning it as an extra word. The antonym would be packish. Pa-kish. Very simple pronunciation. Packish. Again, it's an adjective, obviously. And what does it mean to be packish? It just means to be slightly hungry. To be slightly hungry. So if somebody wants, if somebody asks you, do you want to, do you want to eat? You might respond, well, I could go for a small sandwich. I feel a bit packish. I'm not starving. I'm not very hungry. But I could have a small, small snack. I feel a bit packish. Do you understand? Let's go on to problem number two. I have to turn to the page so I can write down the query. There we go. The next sentence is, so that's it, that was it. Famish and Packish. Let's move on to number two. The next sentence says, the new doctor, the new doctor, did not get along with anyone. He showed, she showed, she showed she showed length towards all her colleagues. She showed blank towards all her colleagues. I want to make sure I spell the colleagues properly. C O L L E A G U E S. She showed blank towards all her colleagues. And the answer choices that we have are gratitude, respect, and so on. And the right answer here is going to be the right answer is going to be She showed animosity. What did she show? She showed animosity. Let's learn the pronunciation. 
N O mass E T. She showed animosity, which means she hated everyone. She hated everyone. To have animosity means to have, to have. Bitter hatred towards someone. You hate them. You hate them with all their all your guts. To show, to have. Bitter. I I know I'm repeating the word, but there we go. Hostility. Hostility is the noun, of course, of hostile. If you're hostile, if you show hostility, if you show hostility. If you have extreme hatred towards someone, you have animosity towards this person. Here is the last meaning: to have, to sh to have open. You're not hiding it; it's out in the open. To have open enmity. Enmity again is a noun. Enmity is what you might feel, not what you might feel. Enmity is what you will feel towards your enemy. How does one spell enemy? I hope that's the right spelling. If somebody, if there is somebody who, who, whom you consider, whom you consider your enemy, then towards that person you will have feeling of enmity, animosity, hatred, hostility. Those are all related. Now, do you know an antonym of enmity? If enmity, if enmity is something that you feel towards your enemy, then the feelings that you have towards your friend is friendliness. Antonym of enmity would be would be friendliness. But of course, we are not here to learn friendliness. Friendliness, friendliness is a simple word. When you give me a vocabulary words, which means friendliness, and the word would be. Not enmity, but amity. Amity means friendliness. Amity. Do you need the pronunciation or no? M E T. Amity means friendliness. It is the antonym. It is the antonym of amity. Amity, rather. And from the word amity, well, not from the word amity, rather, the word amity actually comes from. It comes from, emi, which in Latin simply means French, which is exactly, which is the exact word that the French have for friend. In, in French, emi simply means friend, which is where the Spanish people have, Spanish language has the word amigo, which means friend. It comes from the root of emi, which is where we get our word, which is where. We get our word in English, amiable. Amiable means somebody who comes across as friendly, approachable, nice. Do you understand? If he's approachable, if he's nice to talk to, you feel you feel it, you feel at ease talking to that person. You say he is very amiable. He is very approachable. He is very friendly. Let's move on to number three, shall we? Well, before we move on to number three. There is a word in the answer choices of number two that I would like to learn, that we should learn, and the word is discernment. What's the word? Discernment. Let's learn it. Let's erase everything here. Let's learn that word first before we go to number three. So we're still at number two, and one of the wrong answer choices, one of the wrong answer choices was. Discernment. D. Cern. Munt. It's a noun. Discernment comes from the verb discern. What does it mean to be able to discern? Let's learn it, shall we? Discern, 
discern means to be to be perceptive to be perceptive to be able to to be able to pick up on minute details to pay attention to details. If you are able to pay attention to minute subtle details, that person is said to be discerning, which will be the adjective. The adjective would be discerning. Michael is very discerning. He is able to pay attention to details. He is able to um, uh, pick out minute details. He is very perceptive. He is very observant. To be, to be observant. Up, don't say up. It's not O, it's up. Zer. It has a Z sound, as you can clearly see, it has a Z sound, observant, observant. And of course, observant is an adjective, obviously. It's an adjective, obviously, because now we're talking about to be something. To be observant means to be discerning. To be perceptive, to be perceptive means to be discerning. If you're able to pick up minute details, that such a person is described as being discerning. He's able to discern. Uh, what, what was I going to say? The word observant obviously comes from the word observe. An observant person is so-called because that person is able to observe minute details. Pay attention to details. Do you understand? Observant. How about this one? It means to be, to be, sagacious. And all of these words that we're learning here, uh, to be, to be, Perspicacious. Perspicacious, observant, discerning, and uh, sagacious. All of these words that we see there are the words that we have already learned. So I'm not going to stand here, we're not going to stand here and repeat the same thing over and over again. So if we come across a word that we have already learned, I'm, so, so, so I'm going to simply point out where you will find these words and if you're interested, if you're really motivated, you can go and watch those videos and there is no reason why you should be watching day number 101 if you haven't yet mastered the day the words that we learned in the first 100 days. These these what we see, perspicacious, we learn on day number 93, sagacious, which again we learn on day number 93, observant, what do we call, day 93, they are all there, they are all related, they are there for discerning you, you will all you will find these words on day number 93 and on that day we'll also learn the noun of these words do you know the noun of sagacious the noun of sagacious would be sagacity the noun of sagacious is sagacity one who is sagacious is said to have sagacity one who is perspicacious is said to have perspicacity Perspicacity. He has perspicacity, he is perspicacious, he is observant, he knows how to pay attention to details, he is very discerning, he is very discriminating. Oh, to be, to be If I misspell something, don't make a fuss about it, correct the spelling yourself. As, I, as you know by now, if you've been watching the videos, first 100 videos, you know I always make a disclaimer that I suck at spelling. I'm no good at spelling. So if I misspell something, don't make a fuss about it. Discriminating. To be discriminating means you're able to tell minute differences. You're able to pay attention to details. You're very observant. You're very sagacious. You're very perspicacious. You're very observant, discerning. And the, and the noun was discernment. So that was the, one of the answer choices in, uh, in number two and we're done with it. Let's move on to number three. Let's move on to number three. Number three is a tricky word because there are four answer choices there and all four of those answer choices 
qualify as vocab words. So we're going to have to learn a few words there. And number three, let's see what we have. Number three. As I said, we're going to learn all of the four answer choices there because they, are, they all qualify as vocab words. I'm trying to see what happens after that. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second, one thing at a time. The, the sentence is, the sentence is, we are still on page 23, to say that Shakespeare typed his plays, to say that he typed his play is on, and we have to fill in the blank here, to say that he typed his play is on, on what? And they give you four answer choices, and every one of those four answer choices obviously is going to begin with a vowel, because they're not going to give you one answer choice beginning with a vowel, that will give the game away. Let's first, let's first learn the meaning in the right answer choice and then we'll learn all the other answer choices, shall we? The right answer here, answer choices among the four that are given there, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what those are, we're not going to worry about it right now, but the right answer choice that they're looking for is the word is anachronism, anachronism, the word is Anachronism. Let's learn it, shall we? A nac ro a nac ro nis a nac or nis um anachron as I said you have to slow down otherwise you're gonna muck it up like I just did. Anachronism anachron 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 Try it one more time. I know how to pronounce it, it's just that right now I'm trying to say it fast and it doesn't come out right. Anachronism is the third syllable you have to pay attention to. Anachronism. What's an anachronism? An anachronism is something. Let's, let's digest this first before I tell you what it is. The prefix here that you see here, which means not. The prefix means not. And the suffix here has to do with the word chrono. Chrono. The root here is chrono, which means time, which means time. So anachronism, anachronism literally means something that does not belong to the right time period. Something that is not of the time period. It doesn't belong to that time period. Not of the time period. A, A here that you see is, is the prefix, which means not, like in asymmetric, asexual, uh, and so on and so forth. There are many words with the prefix A, which simply means not. A here is not. The root here is chrono, which means time. A lot of the fancy watchmakers, not the, not the ordinary one, but the very expensive one, the luxury watchmakers, I'm not going to name any names, but if you buy a watch which goes into thousands of dollars, they do not call their watches watches. They do not call their watches timepieces. They prefer to refer to their watches as Chronometer. They do not call their watches watches, they call them chronometer. Chrono being time and meter being something that measures it. They prefer to call their watches the measurement instrument for measuring time. Chronometer. Chronometer has the root of chrono. And if back to our work. Back to our work. So what does it mean literally? It means not of the time period. This is the literal meaning. Not belonging to a given time period. But in this case here, it will mean not belonging to a right time, right time, right time period. Why is that? Why is it an anachronism to say that he typed his plays? Well, of course, it's an anachronism because 
the typewriters did not exist when he was writing his plays. He could not have possibly, Shakespeare could not have possibly typed his play. So to make a claim, to make a claim that he typed his play is an anachronism. It, it doesn't belong in the same time period. How would he possibly get a hold of a typewriter? It wasn't invented yet. Another example would be if you have a play, a play that's depicting something that happened in the Roman Empire, and you see everybody wearing blue jeans and, and new uh, shoes that you wear these days, the kids wear these tennis shoes, and uh, carrying, uh, uh, wearing a wristwatch, for example, if one of the vectors is wearing a wristwatch, those costumes that you see on the, on the, on the, on the stage, play is supposed to depict something that happened in, uh, in, in the, uh, what, 2000 BC, but people are wearing blue jeans and they're wearing wristwatches. The costumes are anachronistic. The costume in that play is said to be anachronistic. That's the adjective. Let's, let's put it on the black, blackboard, shall we? Anachronistic. So to say that he typed his play, that statement is anachronistic. Notice how I'm able to notice how I'm, I'm able to pronounce the word now. Before I had trouble with it because I was thinking about it and I was trying to pronounce it. Sometimes if you know it and if you try to type too, too slowly, artificially, you muck it up. Anachronistic is the word, and the root here is chrono. And from the word chrono, from the word chrono, we have the word chronology. Chronology or chronological adverb, adverb would be adverb would be chronologically adverb would be chronologically chronological means arranged in the order of time arranged in the order of time for example for example if you are a teacher and you're giving an exam you, and you tell the kids as they walk in the classroom, you tell everyone, as you walk in the room, put your name down in this in this clipboard here. I have a clipboard sitting on my desk here. Make sure you type, you print your name here, sign your name here before you sit down. So I know who is taking the exam. So I, so I, want, to, I want to know who is present today. And your signature on the clipboard will indicate that you are here to take the exam. Make sure you sign your name here. Well, by the time everybody has arrived, you will have everybody's name on the clipboard and those names will be arranged how? Obviously those names are not going to be arranged alphabetically because they are signing their name as they walk in. Those names are going to be arranged strictly chronologically. They are going to be arranged in order of time. The first name that you see on the clipboard is the person who walked in first. The very last name on the C on the clipboard, it might be a person whose name begins with the letter A, but his name is very last on the, on the clipboard because he was the last one to walk in. To the, the, the names are arranged chronologically. The word is chronological, and chronological has a root of chrono, has a root of chrono, which means time, which is exactly what we have here. Time and A means not. Not of the same time period, not belonging to the right time period. It is an anachronism. Oh, I just realized something that I did not have to go into this much detail with this bloody word. I just realized it. It is, in fact, something that I have already covered. I don't know, I was just going to simply tell you, I was just going to simply tell you that it's, we already covered it, watch the video and learn it yourself, instead we are wasting all this time. Actually, it wasn't a waste of time, you probably get something out of it. It is something we learned on day number 81. If you watch the video, vocabulary words, day 81, you will see the original video where we covered the word. Let's move on. What we want to do now, what we want to do now is to learn the meanings of all the other words that appear in the answer choices of question number three. As I told you, it has four answer choices and all four of them will qualify as vocab words. So let's learn them, shall we? So I'm going to simply erase this thing and we're going to put down one, one answer choice after the other. And we're going to learn the meaning of the remaining three words and you will see what they are in a second. Okay, I'll get out of your way in a second. I have to get this high-tech eraser ready. There we go. There we go. And one more time, the word is to be pronounced anachronism, anachronistic. The second word that they give you on the answer choice, and, and question number three, is 
Affinity. What does it mean, affinity? To have affinity for something is a noun. To have affinity for something means to have to have natural attraction for something or someone. To have natural attraction for something or someone, to have a to have proclivity for something. If you have proclivity for something, let's learn this word. for something means you are attracted towards it you have a tendency to do that thing uh, you like doing it you have proclivity for it you have inclination towards it you have desire to do it you don't run away from it if you say that I have affinity for math which means I like math I have affinity for it I have proclivity for it I have a election for it to have What predilection is not here in my notes, so if I misspell it, you find it yourself. To have propensity for something. To have to have propensity for something. Pro pen C T. If you have propensity for it, you're likely to do it. To have inclination. If you are if you are inclined to something, if you are inclined to something, you are predisposed to have to be predisposed to have predisposition to have, and this will be the noun of it. This is the adjective. To have, to be and to have, to have predisposition. To have predis predisposition means you are likely to do it, you are, you are inclined to do it, you have affinity for it, you have, you have predilection for it, you have proclivity for it, you like doing it. Or you're more likely to do it. You're very likely to do it. If you say, if you, if you, if you and I are having a talk about something, uh, some problem that, that we had in the office, and and uh, you ask me, well, did you ask Mike? Mike might know something about it. And to which I might say to you, what's the point of asking Michael? You know, he's inclined to lie. You and I both suspect that he did it. But what's the point of asking him? Of course, he's inclined to lie. Of course, he's likely to lie. He is inclined to lie. You know, he's predisposed to lie. He likes lying. In this case, you will not say he has affinity for lying, but it's the same idea. He's predisposed to it. He's inclined to lie. What will be a good, what will be a good antonym for all of these words? If you have likeness for something, if you have affinity for something, if you have proclivity for something, you're likely to do it. You're pulled towards it. You have attraction for it. What if you dislike something? What if you don't like doing something? In which case, in that case, you would say that you are. I need the room, obviously. I'm going to have to restart part. A good antonym of affinity, a good antonym of affinity would be aversion. A were a were. Jean. And again, notice the pronunciation, it has a Z in it, it has a Z in it, a version, Z sound in it, sound of Z, a version. What does it mean if you, are, if you have an aversion, which means to have a strong dislike, it's a noun, to have strong 
dislike for something. You hate it. You hate doing it. Now notice it is a noun, but here I go on to say to do something. It's not a verb, so don't be so picky. Just understand the meaning, that's all. To have a strong dislike means to have aversion. And if you have, if you are, if you have aversion, if you have aversion, the idiom that we use is, the idiom that we use is, to be Averse to something. To be averse to something. Do you understand? You don't, we don't say he's averse by it or he's averse from it. He's averse to it. That is the correct idiom. He's averse to something. For example, for example, uh, we might say, well, you know, Michael is from South. He's from South. He's visiting me in New York, but he's from South. He doesn't like the snow business. He doesn't like the cold, cold weather. He's very much averse to snow. He's very much averse to snow. He hates it. He dislikes it. He doesn't like being in the cold weather. He's averse to, that's the proper idiom. He's from the South. He's averse to the cold weather. He doesn't like it. Let's move on, shall we? There are two more words we still have to cover in the answer choices. As I said, number three was a tricky one. We need the room as always, so we have to raise things. So the, the antonym was aversion. We have, we have to pick up speed because I'm going at very much of a leisurely pace. The next word that we have in the answer choices is atrophy. At ro fi. Atrophy. What does it mean? Atrophy means gradual decline, gradual wasting away. Gradual wasting away of Resting away of muscles or tissues or bones due to due to lack of usage. Due to lack of usage. Usage is a noun. Usage is a noun of the verb use. Usage is something that we learn on day number 85. On day 85 we learn that the noun of use is usage. So if you do not use something, if you do not use something, if you sit around all day staring at the computer screen, you never get up, you never do exercise, sitting in front of the tube watching television all day, uh, eventually uh, you, will, you will suffer, your, your muscles, your tissue, body tissues will, will, will suffer from atrophy. They will begin to deteriorate. They will begin to deteriorate. So gradual wasting away, gradual wasting away, or gradual, gradual deterioration, gradual deterioration of bones or tissues or muscles is said to be atrophy. And the verb, verb here, of course, is deteriorate. D, dear, e, o, re, deteriorate. One might speak, one might use this word metaphorically, instead of using it literally as a deterioration of muscles. One might use this word metaphorically, and one might speak of mental intellectual deterioration mental or intellectual deterioration is because you've been sitting in front of the, this tube watching television all day all night your brain begins to go mushy if you don't use your brain if you don't use any part of your body 
it will begin to deteriorate, it will decay, it will die away. In that case, one might speak of mental atrophy, intellectual atrophy. Because as I said, his mind is going numb, it's going mushy, because you are not using it. There is one more word, last word, in the answer choices, and the word is, I can have to find it, so there we go. And then we are done. This word is tricky, make sure you pronounce it properly. Make sure you pronounce it properly. It is not, it is not to be pronounced antithesis, which is why I sometimes hear people pronounce it. It is the wrong pronunciation. The correct pronunciation of the word would be N, N, thesis, N, this, and this is this, and this is this, and this is this, an antithesis, not antithesis, an antithesis is a contradiction. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction. It is a direct contrast to something. It's the ex exact opposite of something. Exact opposite of something. Antithesis. The adjective would be Anth antithesis, 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 antithetical. Let's put down pronunciation here so we, we can both learn. N T antithetical, antithetical, antithet, antithetical, which is the antonym, antithetically. Antithetically would be the adverb antithetical and ant and antithesis and this is this which means a contradiction. I was pronouncing it properly a second ago and now I'm mucking it up again. Antithesis is a contradiction. Antithesis is a contradiction. For example, for example, you might use this in a sentence by saying, I cannot possibly I cannot possibly for I cannot possibly vote for Michael. I cannot possibly vote for Michael. I cannot possibly vote for him because you know his views. You know his views. He is the antithesis of everything that I believe in. He is the exact opposite. He is the I cannot vote for him. He is the antithesis to everything that I believe in is the contradiction to everything that I believe in. His views are exactly opposite to mine. His views are diamet diametrically opposed to mine. Here's a good word. Something that is diametrically opposed. That's how we speak. Something that is diametrically opposed. And of course, diametrically comes from the word, of course, of course, we are being, being silly right now. Of course, it comes from the word diameter. You know what a diameter is. If you have a diameter, the two, two points are, are located as far extreme as possible. Far extreme as possible. They cannot be farther away. These two points lying on the circle could not possibly be farther away. Don't say further away. Farther. It's the distance. Far, farther, farthest. Don't say further. These two distance, these two points, if you're lying in the circle, are the farthest apart as possible. They could not possibly be farther away because they are located on a diameter. Diameter is a noun. Diameter, of course, is a noun. The adjective of diameter would be diametric. The adjective would be diametric. And diametrically is the adverb, which is how it is used here. So if something, something that is diametrically opposed, that means they cannot possibly be more opposite to each other. They are the exact contradiction of each other. They are the antithesis of each other. Antithesis of each other. Even though I'm, we may not, I may not know how to pronounce this word properly, that's the whole point here. We have to learn. Say it slowly and you will get it right. Whenever we're learning something new, whenever you're learning a new view, which new words, which is why I always make a point of putting a pronunciation there, 
Make sure you put time into pronouncing, uh, pronouncing it properly. Make sure you time into learning the pronunciation. And in the beginning, you have to say slowly, you have to make sure that you're pronouncing each syllable properly, which is why we put down each syllable separately here. And this is us. And this is us. And this is us. And this is us. Which means a contradiction, something that is diametrically opposed, something that are exact opposite of each other. That was the end of the lesson for today. Tomorrow we'll pick up from the next page. Okay? Bye now.